We Read Riding Hood from A Wee Book of Fairy Tales in Scots, written by Matthew Fitt and James Robertson, illustrated by Deborah Campbell and published by Ichiku. Lang, lang ago, in the days of Lang Syne, there was a wee lassie that stayed in a house with her mother on the edge of the muckle green forest. This lassie always wore a bright reed cloak with a hood when she went out, so everybody cried her weary dryden hood. Yin day, our mother called weary dryden hood bent to the kitchen and said, Poor Granny Mutchie's no that wheel, she's in her bed and tain a peel. I've baked a cake for her the day, and here's a poke of apples tea. Now tack them tear through the wood, a visit for you would they are good. Weary Dryden Hood put the cake and the poke of apples in her basket and put on her reed cloak. Granny Mutchie stayed on the other side of the muckle green forest, but Weary Dryden Hood didn't mind. She often walked along the path to Granny's house and she loved to stop and see the bonny floors and speak to the wee craters that stayed among the trees. Just as she was closing the garden yet, her mother called to her through the window. Mind no lass and dinna donder and fray for the pathway dinna wander. Go straight to your Granny Mutchie's house. They say there's a wolf out on the loose. Weary Dridenhood skipped and ran along the path through the muckle forest, carrying the basket with the cake and apples in it. After a while, she stopped running and had a kick about. Hiya, hoolets, hiya, doos, which your crack and which your news? Hiya, squirrel, deer and brock, would you like to hear talk? But the birds and craters were a bit shy and didn't speak back to her. Weary Dridenhood didn't care. She forgot all about what her mother had told her and wandered off the path to pour some flowers for Granny Mutchie. She put down her basket and found some bonny bluebells and put a hail bunch. When she gave back to her basket, there was a wolf standing aside it. He was an awfully handsome beast. He had sleek brown fur and bright yellow een and lang claws on his feet and a muckle big smile on his face. Weary Dridenhood could count all his teeth, which were much bigger than her own teeth. He had twenty seven, and they were as sharp as nails. Hello, the wolf said. What's your name, my dear? Do you reside somewhere round here? I stay with my mother. There's just her and me. I'm cried wee red Dridenhood, cause my hood's reading them wee. Oh, who lovely. I once kent a man, cried Hood. No, what brings you here? Are you looking for food? I'm going to my granny's. She's sixty year old, but she's off in no wheel. She's in bed with a cold. I've brought her a cake and some ah apples and all, and this big bunch of flowers. Look, are they no just bra? Off a bra, the wolf said. What a lovely surprise! I can just picture the look in her eyes. But you shouldn't be out in the forest like this. Let me show you our house. I ken where it is. Weary Dridenhood minded what her mother had said. Thanks, but nae need, she said. Good afternoon. I ken the way to, and I'll be there, guy, soon. The wolf might have tried to keep her blethering, but just then he heard the chap, chap, chap of somebody cutting wood with an axe. A forester worked in the forest, and the wolf was feared for him, so the wolf said, Cheerio, hen, I'll see you again. And he slipped it into the trees. Weary Dridenhood picked up her basket and hurried along the path. But the wolf was quicker. He arrived at Granny Mutchie's house first. He chapped at the door. An old voice called out, Who's there? The wolf put on a wee squeaky voice and said, It's me, Weary Dridenhood. Dinna keep me shut out. I've brought you cake and some flowers and some fruit. Oh, you're a darling, Granny said. I feel such a wreck. Just come a wa in. The door's aft the snack. The wolf gave Ben the house, shutting the door ahint them. And there in the bedroom was Granny Mutchie sitting up in her bed. Afore she had time to cry out, he opened his mouth and ate her up. He was in such a hurry to finish afore we did Dryden who'd arrived that he didn't even bother to chaw, but swallowed her doon in one mouthfee. 
he put on her knit cap and her glasses, pulled the curtains ticked to make the room dark and looped into the bed. Then he lay there with the covers up under his chin and waited. After a while, there was a chapper at the door. The wolf put on his best old lady's voice and called out, Was there? And Weary Jidenhood said, It's me, Weary Jidenhood. Dinna keep me shut out. I've brought you a cake and some flowers and some fruit. Oh, you're a darling, the wolf said. I feel such a wreck. Just come awa in, the door's off the snack. Weary Jidenhood came in and put her basket on the kitchen table. She hadna even closed the front door when the wolf said, Come ben, my darling, and give me a smile. Come ben and sit by your granny a while. Weary Jidenhood gave Ben to the bedroom. Hello, granny, are you feeling sair? Och, it's awfully dark, and there's nae fresh air. Aye, I pulled the curtains to keep out the lichts. Come closer so I can see your lichts. Weary Jidenhood took a step closer to the bed. It was hard to see much, but her granny smelt as if she needed a good wash. Granny, Weary Dridenhood said, what muckle long lang lugs you have? What all the better to hear you be, said the wolf. Come a bit closer. Weary Dridenhood took another step. Granny, what muckle big in you have? Oh, the better to see you be, slavered the wolf. Just come a wee bit closer. Weary Dridenhood stood right next to the bed. Granny? What muckle sharp teeth you hae? Oh, the better to eat ye away, said the wolf. And he threw off the covers and caught weary Jidenhood and swallowed her doon in Jan Muthfey. Then he smacked his lips, ditched his face with his tongue and fell asleep in the bed. Now, when the forester that worked in the muckle green forest was loused for the day, A.I. walked home past Granny Mutchie's house. On this day... He saw the door was wide open, which didn't seem right. He chapped at the door and got no answer, so he gave in. And there on the table was Weary Dridenhood's basket with the cake and the apples and the flowers in it. I ken that basket, the forester said. Michty, that's queer. It's Weary Dridenhood's, but she isn't here. He looked in the bedroom, which was all dark. When he opened the curtains, a wee chink, he saw the wolf snoring fast asleep in the bed and no sign of weary Jidenhood or Granny Mutchie. But the forester saw that the wolf's belly was footy bursting. He took out a knife for his belt and he carefully cut open the wolf's belly and there inside, all squashed up and currying in together, were weary Jidenhood and Granny Mutchie. The forester put his finger to his lips and they crept out the wolf's belly without whacking him. Then Weary Jidenhood gaed into the garden and gathered up some big stains. The forester put the stains inside the wolf's belly and Granny Mutchie took her needle and thread and sawed the wolf back up again. When everything was read up, the forester opened the window wide and stood at the door and shouted at the tappy's voice, Ha oh, Granny, I'm hungry. Do you ha any cakes? I've been working all day chapping trees with my aches. The wolf woke with a fleg, jumped out of the bed and looped straight out the windy. He ran and ran, but the stains in his belly get heavier and heavier till at last he came to a burn in the middle of the muckle green forest. When he tried to swim across it, the stains made him sink to the bottom and he drooned. Back at the house, weary Dridenhood, Granny Mutchie and the forester all sat down for an apple and a big scliff of cake to their tea. And they all lived happily ever after.